Hi, reading team. I want to take time and do this new section. This is going to be text structures and genres. And, and basically, this is sort of a continuation of some of the problems that we've already seen. But we're going to be focusing now on narrative and expository text and sort of just focus on those areas. So, so far in comprehension, we talked about, we did some vocabulary questions. Let me, let me draw this out. We talked about how there are going to be some vocab. And we talked about there's going to be best practice questions. And now we're going to do those text questions. And one of the things we were mentioning is that these three ideas, they overlap, meaning you're going to have some vocabulary questions that overlap with best practice questions. At the same time, they could also be a narrative text or expository text. So you, you've already had exposure to a whole bunch of text questions. When we think of text questions, we're going to focus in on a narrative text and uh, informational text or in expository text. And these are going to be the questions in this section. There is a big difference on what we've done and what we're going to do is that these questions, um, more of them are going to focus on the upper grades. So we'll do a couple of younger grades with narrative and informational text, but more of them are going to be middle school and high school. And so I think this is going to flush out, you know, that section of the class a little bit more because we spent a lot of time on preschool, first, second, third grade, a little bit of fourth grade. And now we're going to focus more on those older students, fifth, sixth, seventh, mid, eighth grade, high school. And so these questions will involve those older students. Okay. So just, just be ready for that. In this, in this section here, again, we'll focus on narrative text and expository text. Now, a lot of times there's, there's keywords that let you know you're dealing with a, a narrative text scenario. Sometimes they say story. Anytime they say story, then that's going to be a narrative text. This is our clue. The student is reading a story. That's a narrative text. Sometimes they say story elements. Let me write that down. Anytime they say story elements, that is also a clue that you're dealing with a story. Story elements, remember, are things like beginning, middle, and end. So we have here the, the uh, story elements, beginning, middle, and end, plot the character, the setting, the characters, these are all story elements. We would, we would, these are the most basic uh, uh, characteristics of a narrative text. These are the things we go over first. But, but these would be another clue that you have a scenario involving a narrative text. Sometimes you're, it mentions a, uh, a literary text, literary uh, text, literary texts are referencing narrative text. So, so if it says a narrative text or stories or a question involving story elements or literary text or literary analysis, we're doing something involving a literary text or, or, or narrative text, okay? If you have questions involving an expository text, sometimes they may say, uh, they'll, 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 they'll communicate it's an expository text, they'll drop these cues. They'll, they'll list the content area. They'll say uh, a science textbook a history textbook, a math textbook, something like that Well, they'll actually give you the clues uh, of what the topic is. And you have to remember, if it's, a, if it's a science textbook or a math textbook or, or a history textbook, it's a type of expository text. Or they'll call this a, an informational text. So sometimes they reference expository text as informational text. They'll just drop the, the subject area or a content area so, so anything involving content is going to be some type of informational expository text. Okay. All right. This is important because, you know, you always want to be able to, when you're reading these questions, you want to be able to not only identify that it's a reading comprehension question, but it's a reading comprehension question involving a narrative text, or it's a reading comprehension question involving a informational text or expository text. This is important. Okay. And so, so this is what we'll focus on in this section. And we're going to start, we're going to start with narrative text, okay? And story elements, because and, and that basic story structure. Let's take a look at that now. We think of this basic structure for narrative text, and we always think about, you know, stories, story structure, story maps. This is something that you might see for a beginner reader. Like, let's say you had a story. I just pulled out this one right here. Frog and Toad are friends. One of the stories in this uh, in this novel. Okay. Now, in every story in this text, a uh, narrative text, um, you might go through the setting. 
where is frog and toad? Okay, uh, frog's in bed or toad's in bed, doesn't want to get out. You know, you ask these questions on the where, the setting. You go through the characters. What do you know about the two characters? And, and then identify uh, events that happen in the beginning, middle, and end of the story. In the beginning, Toad doesn't want to get out of bed. Then Frog forces him out of bed and he goes down the hill. And then he learns that he likes it, but then wants to go back to bed. Okay, if you read these books, you know what I'm talking about. But th this is the basic uh, elements that we would see in a story map, right? And a story map would help organize the information. It'd go through the story elements, like the, the characters and setting, and the major events in the story, the beginning, middle, and end. This would be very appropriate for a beginner reader. So story maps like this, very appropriate for a beginner reader. Uh, story maps like this, now this is going to be for a more complex narrative text, like, like a story like Romeo and Juliet. Maybe you're doing some eighth grade drama and you have, you're reading this play, doing a story plot map or something like this where it maps out not just the events, but the rising action of the stories, the fall, the climax and the falling action and resolution. Things like this would be more appropriate for a upper, you know, middle school or high school group of students. So we will see some questions here. So this, the first couple of questions are going to be more focused on beginner readers dealing with basic narrative text uh, structures. And then as we go on, eventually we'll see some questions involving more complex narrative text structures. And that's going to use a different type of approach uh, for this more complex narrative text or literary text. Um, notice that um, both of these, this is a typographic organizer, a story map. This, this type of story map that, that emphasizes the plot and the rising action and falling action this is another typographic organizer. So you will see in this section a lot of the use of a lot of different graphic organizers. Okay. Okay, let's do our first question. It's going to be involving a, a basic narrative text. Okay. Let's take a look. 